India's National Space Day is meant to highlight the significant role of the Indian Space Research Organization in the field of science and technology, the successes so far, and the challenges and goals ahead. And to tell us all about that is the man himself. Deepak Bopanna spoke exclusively with the chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization, as Somnath. Listen in. You know, talking about uh, man on the moon, but before, like you said, Gaganyaan is the next plan. So where is that, the, if you could give us the latest update on Gaganyaan at this point in time, we believe very soon there's going to be an unmanned spacecraft that's going to go and do a trial run of space, which the manned aircraft is going to do. Tell us about the timeline and where the stage right now is. See, uh, of course, uh, in the Gaganyaan program, we have been a little slow in the, in the past. I must admit that uh, the technology development program was going on. The first of the four thrust was on the rocket side because rocket need to be much more reliable. We call it human rating. So a lot of tests have on the stages uh, of the LVM3 uh, to convert it to human rated. And the entire process is now completed. The rocket in the final stage of flight has now been realized and brought to Sri Arikota launch complex. It's there now. Now second uh, element is the crew module where the crew has to enter. But this development is getting taking time because the technology to make a CRA place uh, in piece of engineering to do it in India is not there. So this is completely being done indigenously? We, origin is... we originally thought that we could do it outside okay. and we tried in many ways to get it done outside where there is some experience of doing it yeah. but nothing materialized due to many reasons, technological, contractual, cost and many other things prevented from doing such a thing. Finally we have decided to do it here using the home ground knowledge and technology which has taken a little longer time. It, it becomes indigenous and we are going to get it from industry now. Then uh, that part is one. Second is there is something complex elements in it, which is called the crew module, electronics, crew module, propulsion and service module, environmental control and life support system. They are under different levels of development. In the first flight, of course, human being is not going to go, so everything is not needed, especially the oxygen supply, water supply, food supply is not needed, and uh, waste management is not needed. So we are going to put a robot. So the robot is under development and it has now reached the flight. What will this robot be capable of doing? It can interact with us or with the audio manner. It can also do some functions like keys and switches and controls and replacement of some valves, opening some valves, things like that, which is needed for experiment. But more importantly, it will measure, suppose a human is inside, what type of environment that will temperature, pressure, uh, the vibration, shock, everything is measure. So that will give an idea about a person actually going, how he will feel it about it. So it will be fully instrumented. Then uh, there are other items called crew escape system. You would have seen that we had uh, yes. done a launch of that uh, part and we proved that it is already there, but that's only one mission. So we are we have to do one more before we actually do the unmanned mission. So that's also getting ready. So the flight item is almost re realized now. And lastly, there is another critical item called uh, the uh, integrated vehicle health management system, which actually is a computer of complex nature, which will monitor the rocket while it flies and checks whether everything is in order, whether all parameters are correct. Is there any failure going to happen? Not after failure, it will say it, is go it has failed, but prior to failure, it must look at the entire health of it and say that yeah, there is an imminent danger. And if that danger is seen, you are about. Save the crew. So this has to happen in less than few milliseconds of time. So that is also developed. The flight item is undergoing simulation and test. So all of this will come together at Sri Kota in another few months of time. And we are hoping that by December we should be able to integrate everything. As India celebrates, uh, you know, National Space Day, you know, what do you think is the importance of the day? Landing on the moon has been an enigma for many. For, you know, starting from the space age, the the fierce competition that uh, erupted early 60s to reach moon and then land human on the moon. You now that story is well behind us. Uh, and uh, over a period of time, the interest on the moon came down uh, a across nation. But then the, there is a new interest in going to moon. Every nation is trying to make it a point to reach moon. And that's why you've been seeing many missions happening in the recent times. The Russians, the Americans, the Japanese, the Chinese, all of them were going sending moon, not human beings. They are robotic missions. So uh, in that context, the mission of India going to moon in the renewed interest of going to moon becomes significant. And for us, it, the significance came because that we were the first to land on the southern side of the moon, which is considered to be more scientifically of greater interest. So, and we were the first to do that. And we were the fourth to be on the moon on a robotic leader. 
So, and also it came to a, on a time then, then we were landing. There were other missions all trying to go along with us to go to moon and land and many of them uh, were struggling. So, in that context, uh, leaving behind our experience of 2019, not able to land softly, the event on 23rd August 2023 became an historic event for of us. And you said the significance in many sectors, the importance and significance of this will be felt. The first and foremost in the minds of young people, students, researchers, and for them uh, it's a confidence giver on the might of India to develop such a capability, do it on our own uh, uh, will, uh, do it from India based on technologies that were developed in India. Second, it gives uh, every Indian a pride of being an Indian uh, craft reaching the moon and putting our flag on that. Absolutely. That gives you second, you know, a pride. Looking at the scientific goals and accomplishments, that it has been historical that the Chandrayaan one was the one, the craft that identified water presence of water on the moon. Even after so many years of exploration of the moon, and it was the the one the remote sensing instrument on the Chandrayaan, an American instrument as well as Indian Indian instrument found out the traces of water. Later corroborated by further findings. Now Chandrayaan three. Uh, is going to do that. But even Chandrayaan 2, you know, the OHRC camera was one of the highest resolution images ever produced on the moon, which was used by other agencies now. And, and the, the orbiter was functional for such a long time. Such a long time, yes. And Chandrayaan 3, of course, found out some, many of the scientific findings yesterday. India's National Space Day is meant to highlight the significant role of the Indian Space Research Organization in the field of science and technology. These successes so far and the challenges and goals ahead. And to tell us all about that is the man himself. Deepak Bopanna spoke exclusively with the chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization as Somnath. Listen in. You know, talking about uh, man on the moon, but like you said, Gaganyan is the next plan. So where is that? The, if you could give us the latest update on Gaganyan at this point in time, we believe very soon there's going to be an unmanned spacecraft that's going to go and do a trial run of which the manned aircraft is going to do. Tell us about the timeline and where the stage right now is. See, uh, of course, uh, in the Gaganyan program, we have been a little slow in the, in the past. I must admit that uh, the technology development program was going on. The first of the four thrust was on the rocket side because rocket need to be much more reliable. We call it human rating. So a lot of tests have on the stages uh, of the LVM3 uh, to convert it to human rated. And the entire process is now completed. The rocket in the final stage of flight has now been realized and brought to Sri Arikota launch complex. It's there now. Now, second uh, element is the crew module, where the crew has to enter. But this development is getting taking time because the technology to make a cra place uh, in piece of engineering to do it in India is not there. So this is completely being done indigenously. We, origin we originally thought that we could do it out. 